Hello everyone on the computer, smartphone, smart television, or old television that happens to be connected to a router or the internet. Thank you for finding my channel. I do weekly videos about autism and how to cope with the various challenges in the attempt to make your life better and reach your fullest potential. Do you like to hyper focus on things? I know I sure do. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've been doing it ever since the day I was born. Whenever I think about something exciting or do things I feel is important, I will have the tendency to want to keep doing it, keep doing it, until I'm finally done. Obviously, this kind of hyper-focusedness and hyper-fixating process isn't always healthy in the long run. It can cause you to fixate so much that it might cause you to not do other things that are important. Then, it can cause you to start feeling anxiety and burnout. This can cause you to, to then feel less motivated to do anything else, and this can affect bigger things like relationships and overall well-being. I'm sure you can agree with me that it can be hard to not get overboard and start hyperfixating when something you do you feel is important. Feeling like you have to put all your eggs in one basket, rush to get it done, and then feel major anxiety when you can't finish it sucks. It's not a fun experience. Well, in this video, I am going to talk about how you can learn how to focus on things that are important, but in a way that is also healthy instead of a way that creates stress, anxiety, and the urge to hyperfixate on something in a bad way. Well, let's get started. Autistic people are good at hyperfocusing and fixating. It is our gift. It can help us focus on things we believe is important, and it can help us achieve a lot too. However, as you have probably already found out, if you don't have good control over hyperfocusing, and when to not hyperfocus, this can be a problem. It can quickly cause an imbalance in your life, which won't be good in the long run. This can cause you to not want to do other things like care for your own personal needs, like eating, taking a shower, taking care of your house, pets, and people you have close relationships with. Your life will become imbalanced to the fear of not getting certain things done. And this causes an imbalance that can get worse over time the more you do this. You create too strong of an attachment to the outcome of a specific thing. This can make you become less flexible, be open to new things, be in a constant state of fight or flight, stress, and it can wreak havoc on other important aspects in your life like career and relationships. This can, can reduce your overall happiness and well-being. However, it's possible for many autistic people or people with ADHD who struggle with this sort of thing to manage their hyper-focus in a better way. So how do you exercise better hyper-focusedness and live a more balanced life? The first thing you can do is practice living more of a balanced life. You can find balance a lot in nature. A thriving ecosystem thrives by balance. A healthy body works best when everything is in perfect harmony. However, many countries in the world unfortunately don't practice this sort of balance when we are told to, to always rush and get many things done as possible. People in Sweden, however, have practiced a lifestyle called legum, where they practice doing things in moderation. If they feel like they are doing things in excess, they'll gently try to reduce what they are doing to maintain a sort of peaceful balance. As a result, Swedish people have been known to be one of the most happiest cultures in the world. You can be happier too by bringing this legum culture to your home too by gently practicing this sort of daily lifestyle. If you want to live a more balanced life, this does not mean forcing yourself to do things you don't want to do, but living in moderation means doing what you want to do, but also practice the moderation of always being open to other things more when it's appropriate. If you feel like you're starting to do something in access, like starting to hyper-focus too long or hyper-fixate, you can use the legum mindset of living a more balanced life to bring yourself more in, into a happier center. The second thing you can do is understand if you can't finish whatever it is you want to do at the time, things won't be as bad as you believe it could be. Yes, paying your bills are important. However, if you're truly honest with yourself, I'm sure you can agree that there's many other things you, that you felt are just as important and hyper-focus on when in reality it really isn't. Yes, that painting you're painting might look beautiful, and yes, it is very unique and inspiring, and it is yours, but the roof on your house suddenly collapsing because you didn't take the time to trim those tree branches over the roof of your house will definitely make you more unhappy for the fact that your roof collapsed than your painting being crushed. It can be very easy to believe that if you can't get a certain thing done, it'll be the end of the world. However, in reality, nothing is that bad. In fact, many Dutch people have recently fancied the idea where they believe if you have 
had nothing, you can still be happy, maybe even happier. The third thing you can do is getting in the habit of reminding yourself that things actually won't be that bad if you don't finish it. For example, whenever you start doing something you think is important, before you even start, remind yourself that it won't be that bad of a thing if you can't finish. Then try to remind yourself that again while doing the task. Then if you start getting anxious, feeling like you have to rush whenever it is done, then remind yourself that it is okay if you don't again. The fourth thing you can do is enjoy the process, not the destination. It may be tempting to hurry up and finish something to wreak the benefits and rewards of having that project finished. However, the end is usually never as fun as the process. If you enjoy the process more, it won't matter if you actually complete it or not because you're having fun anyway and you're happy and you'll ha have more fun in the project overall. Not only will you be happier and less stressed doing the things that you need to do, but you'll end up slowing down and doing more quality work that will be better anyway. You won't stress and rush making the project that is half-baked. So try to enjoy the process. There is an amazing YouTuber called Winter Garden, where a person is building a mechanical marble machine where musical instruments get played by marbles mechanically dropping on the instruments. His work is really fascinating. He has been building this machine over three years now, and once it's finished, he plans on bringing the machine to be played at music concerts around the world. Not only do I love great music and mechanical machinery, but I also enjoy watching this crap and ship and engineering skills evolve over the years. However, the most inspiring thing about his work is that he takes his time. He knows finishing this marble machine and playing it at a concert in front of thousands of people will be awestrucking. However, he doesn't try to rush to complete it though. Instead, he takes his time and he enjoys the process of building the machine. He constantly improves the parts to make the machine run more efficiently. He even takes apart many parts of the machine he took hours to build just to rebuild parts over again to make it run more efficiently. His patience and the enjoyment of the process is not only going to make his machine more amazing than it ever could be, everyone else also benefits by enjoying the process too by watching more videos of the construction process. I would recommend following his, his channel. It is really inspiring. I'll provide a link in the description. The fourth thing you can do is try not to do things you think is important sometimes. Sometimes when you think something is really important and if you're afraid to not finish it, sometimes causing you to not enjoy the process, sometimes the best thing to do is just simply stop doing what you're doing and take a break. Sometimes when you're anxious about doing something, sometimes doing the opposite like stopping will train your mind to stop the fear and then you'll be able to have an easier time doing something else in the long run. Disconnecting is a good way to train yourself to be more adaptable. Now I'm not telling you should refuse doing anything that gives you pressure, but simply withdrawing your efforts if you feel like you're going to do something that's causing you to become attached and hyper-focused. Even if you feel like it will be somewhat of a challenge, try to do it anyway. Because eventually, it will get easier the more you do this. The fifth thing you can do is practice being in the now moment. Understand it doesn't matter in the future if you enjoy the now moment. Enjoying what you're doing now is what really matters. It's okay to want to do things that can benefit your future, and it's definitely great to have passion. However, like Wintergarden, it is important to enjoy the process, not the destination. This can apply with everything in life. If you enjoy the now moment, you will not only enjoy what you're doing more now, but you will be more happier, more a peaceful and loving person in general because you won't be worrying about the future or regretting the past. It's actually a really easy thing to do and the impact is greater than you can possibly imagine. The sixth thing you can do is practice patience. I've always struggled with being patient. However, I learned that you can put yourself in a sort of patient mode, which can help you get out of anxiety. I used to love playing Mario as a kid. I remember enjoying Mario 3 because of all the different kinds of power-ups that put Mario into different kinds of suits that give Mario special abilities. Every human also has a special kind of power-up too that they can use anytime you choose. And I call this the patient power-up that can get you into the patient mode. You can gain this power-up by choosing to physically slow down if you're in a hurry. When you try to hurry, your body gets into a sort of fight-or-flight mode, which causes you to tense up and be in a mindset of being impatient. You'll then lose this power-up and become small Mario. In other words, you'll be impatient and have anxiety. However, by physically slowing down when you're feeling anxious, you will change your mindset again relaxing your physical body, 
relaxing your muscles and that will automatically put yourself into a mindset where you'll become into patient mode again you'll be transformed back into patient mode as long as you deliberately decide to do things slow and try not to be in a hurry every part of your physical body and mind will automatically be transformed into patient you the seventh step is to try to embrace change change is a challenge for many people on the autism spectrum i know it has for me especially unexpected change that changes your routine because it causes you to have to reorganize my thoughts use my executive functioning multitask more and learn new things however i find it's important to understand change can be a good thing it's not a monster to fear but really an angel in disguise to help you you can reduce a lot of stress by learning to accept things embrace it and dread it less by understanding the good things about it yes there might be times where change can happen for the worse however even during those times, you can use that time as an opportunity to practice being accepting and controlling your anxiety to make your life better in the future. If you want to learn more about coping with change, please check out my video, Coping with Change. While I talked about seven different ways to help you manage your hyper-focus ability in a way where it will not let you take over your life, which can cause an imbalanced lifestyle and create anxiety. While I hope you found this video helpful, if you did, please give this video a thumbs up and show it to another person you feel could benefit from this. Please stay healthy, safe, keep being informed, embrace your interests, and most importantly, love yourself because love is the way. Thanks for watching and make the rest of the day a good day.